So another week we're gathered together in a different way. I miss seeing you face to face, but I imagine that not all of you are dressed in your school uniform, so that's probably a good thing. Uh, maybe some of you are still in your pajamas uh, watching morning assembly. And so uh, I hope you are having a few things that you really appreciate about this time. Maybe it's more time with, um, with your parents and your family. Maybe it's a little bit more time in bed. You get to sleep in just a little bit longer. Uh, but I know it's not an easy time, but I hope there are a few things that you're enjoying. But I will tell you one of the things that I'm not enjoying is that I don't get to see you at morning assembly. But that doesn't mean we can't come together and be together during this time uh, in the morning. And so uh, it's Tuesday uh, when you're watching this, I hope. Um, and uh, this is our morning assembly together. And so we will start with the school prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you love us as your children. Bless our school, its faculty, staff, students, families, and friends. Bless our church, its priests, leaders, staff, and all its members. Open our hearts to accept and serve others with compassion and respect. Enrich our minds with your wisdom so that we may learn to love and love to learn. Help us to excel and to grow in grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior, Teacher, Lord, and Friend. Amen. So next week will be our last week of Lent, and then we will go into Holy Week. So next week, I will talk about Holy Week. But this week, I wanted to talk a little bit about where we are uh, both in Lent and then not being able to come together, both of those realities that are right there with us right now. Um, and I don't know if you remember, I said last week, and if you didn't get a chance to see last week's morning assembly, uh, it's on the school's uh, YouTube page, and you can get your parents to, uh, or actually you all probably can find it faster than your parents, uh, but you can pull it up and watch it. But I talked uh, at least a little bit about the fact that the word for quarantine um, uh, when we have to be apart from one another, actually comes from what Jesus did in the wilderness. Remember that Lent is 40 plus days because of Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness. And he did that by choice. Uh, he did that so that he'd have time uh, to get away from things and just to be with God, to be still in a, little bit, in a, in a different way. Uh, he was so busy when he was around all the people. People had questions and they wanted things from him. And Jesus knew that the work that he was called to do was going to take a lot of faith and a lot of strength. And so he went into the desert to be with God, uh, to pray with God, uh, and just to have time uh, to let go of all of those things other people expected of him and all those things that weighed on him. Uh, and he just enjoyed and uh, took the time to be with God. Uh, and I hope that during this Lent and during this time where we have to be apart from each other, uh, that you're taking that extra time, that maybe just a few extra minutes that you didn't have because you were busy getting ready or hopping in the car to come here, uh, taking a little bit of extra time just to be still and to think about God in your life um, and the God in your heart. And that's one of the, the important things about Lent. That's why we take things off, um, uh, is to make more, more room for God. And uh, it's why we put things on to help us uh, know that God is, is part of our lives in a bigger and bigger way. So I hope uh, that this time, uh, not only does it give you time to be in your pajamas a little longer and maybe a little bit more sleep, uh, but maybe it gives you time to have just a little bit more time with God. And the second thing that I want you to think about this week, the second thing I want you to be thinking about, is the many stories in the Bible, the many gospel stories that talk about how Jesus went to people who had to be alone. Uh, Jesus ministered to a lot of people who had to sleep outside of the town, who had to sleep away from their, their families because they were sick in some way. Either they had what they called leprosy or, uh, or they were blind um, or some that, uh, uh, that were outside the town because they'd, they'd, they'd made mistakes and, uh, and people uh, thought they weren't, uh, they weren't good enough to be in the, in the church community, uh, which is not the way God works at all. Uh, but for all these different reasons, there were people who felt like they had to be 
isolated or alone, or other people felt they had to be isolated or alone. Uh, and I think the most important thing in the stories is not just that Jesus healed and forgave all of these people, uh, but that Jesus went to them, that Jesus went to them uh, and made them well. Uh, and I hope uh, that as we go through this time and however long it's going to take, that we are aware that God goes into those places where we are alone, uh, where we're separated from one another. Uh, because we might be able to separate from one another, but we can never separate from God because God would never separate God's self from us. Uh, just like he goes to the lepers and he goes to the blind and he goes to the sick um, and those whose legs and bodies don't work the right way, he goes to all of them uh, and he's with them. He makes them well, but he goes to them. Uh, so whenever you are feeling a little bit alone or a little bit nervous or just tired of not being able to come to school or to be with your friends or to be with Father Ben, that you know that God is with you. That the Bible tells us again and again in those stories that Jesus goes to those places, to the people who feel alone. Uh, and he not only makes them well, but he's with them. God is with you, okay? So please take some time to think about that. Maybe in that extra time that you have with God uh, each day, that you think about the fact that God is with you. Um, and God's not just with you, but the people that might be on your prayer list or on your mind or in your heart, uh, God is with them too. And with all the people who are sick, God is definitely with them too, okay? And now I'd like us to all pray together. And I'm going to lead us in a prayer, but I'm going to leave space for you all to add your own prayers. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Most loving God, we give thanks for today and for all the days that you give us, for our teachers and all the ways that they're reaching out to us and bringing school into our houses, for all the, uh, the grown-ups that are helping us uh, to... Uh, to continue to learn and continue to have school uh, in a new place for all of our classmates and friends that we don't get to see in the same way, but we think about. We also ask your prayers for those who are sick or hurting or those who are working hard and using the gifts that you gave them to, to make people well and to keep people safe. Now, we ask all the prayers that sit on our hearts up to you. So please, take a moment to say whatever's on your heart, whoever you want to pray for. Maybe it's a family member or, um, or even a pet who's a family member. Maybe it's a story you've seen on the news. Hopefully you're not watching too much news. Maybe it's just for the world. Or maybe it's a thank you for knowing that God is always with us. But whatever you pray, pray it right now. Lift it up to God. We pray all these prayers and those that are on our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now I forgot one of the most important things. For all of you who had celebrated a birthday this week, this week um, and aren't here to celebrate in person, there's a special prayer for you. I am sure the people who love you are singing you happy birthday and know that uh, we all wish you a happy birthday as well. Uh, but I'm going to give you your birthday prayer. Uh, so this birthday prayer is for you if you're celebrating your birthday this week. So let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them where they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in your heart, may the peace which passes understanding be with them all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, I figured I'd close with a blessing. We don't always close a morning assembly with a blessing, but I like the words of it, so I hope it stays with you. Remember that life is short, and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be quick to be kind, make haste to love, and the blessing of God Almighty, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. I hope you all have a great week, and I'll be back here next week. God bless you.